What's up and welcome to section five, safety. This may be the most, the most talked about uh, question that I get asked all the time. Do, or do you feel safe when you arrive? Is this country safe? Should I go to this country? And it always comes back to safety. Um, it's hard because it's hard for me to speak about safety when it comes to genders because I'm a male so I can really talk about how safety is a, uh, is a concern to me however I have done a lot of talking with uh, female solo travelers especially and I have gotten a lot of information from them so I do know some things however when it comes down to it safety is all about how you feel when you're in that country so I'm gonna go over some tips and things that I do to make me feel safer in these countries and I think there's there are, there are tips that can be you know put across the board so first and foremost I spoke about this in an earlier section letting people know where you're at all right I'm not saying you need to let people know every single thing you're gonna do in this uh, in this new city and whatnot however checking in using Facebook snapchat Instagram finding a way to uh, so people know where you're at your family is gonna worry about you especially if you're traveling it doesn't matter if you're an experienced traveler or if you know this is your first travel ever that doesn't matter because families are going to worry we all have families uh, that worry and you got you got to be aware of this so I do the Facebook thing and my uh, my family and my friends know that if they need to see me or figure out where I'm at I'm not answering my phone hey he probably doesn't have Wi-Fi let's see where he's at and they'll go to my little uh, the little uh, Facebook and be like oh he just checked into Cambodia like four hours ago and it's like 7 a.m. there, so he's probably sleeping. Um, so, yeah. Remember those find those things right there. Um, another thing to also um, always have downloaded, have the Find My iPhone, if you have an iPhone. I, I, I'm sure Android has a similar app or, or whatnot to find it if it gets lost. Have that app downloaded and have it on when you get in the country. I'm not saying be worried about getting your phone stolen or something like that. However, I've only been pickpocketed in one country and one city throughout you know the hundreds that I've been at and that was Medellin Colombia one of an amazing city and I love the country however it was the one place that I was someone was able to take my phone out of my uh, my jean pockets and they were really tight jeans so it was kind of I don't know how they were really good however I was lucky enough to have noticed it I hadn't drank a lot that night I was kind of I was kind of like the one that I don't want to say DD because we don't really drive anywhere but I was the one who wasn't getting as drunk as everybody else uh, so I felt it, turned around, saw the guy. Uh, he wasn't, he was a he was maybe 15, 16 year old uh, kid. I chased him down, got my phone back, and uh, that was, I was lucky for that, uh, that I was able to uh, get the phone back because that's a, you know, it's a very expensive phone. And you need to remember that a lot of these families over there, if they get, I, I talked to my hostel people afterwards, and they told me that if a kid, if he would have got away with that, that was like you know a month's worth of uh, of uh, paychecks just in that one phone because they would have just sold it and used it. So I, I until that moment, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get pickpocketed. I'm the tattooed guy with long hair and a beard. I'll never get pickpocketed. Uh, wrong. You can get pickpocketed. Anybody can get pickpocketed. So keep that in mind. Um. Next, don't always book the cheapest place because it's cheap. It may be cheap for a reason. Sometimes you get cheap places and they're awesome. And sometimes they're cheap because no one wants to stay there. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not saying the more expensive means the safer because that's BS as well. Um, and I'm not saying the cheaper is the, le is the, you know, the less safe because that's not accurate either. Um, what I'm saying is reviews, reviews, reviews. Read reviews. Like I told you earlier about, I talked about the hostelworld.com and the booking.com. Reading reviews on hostels, I read double website reviews to find out the most accurate representation of that place. Um, also remember, when you read a, a bad hostel review, a lot of times, especially on uh, Hostel World, I know, you can see the age and uh, the demographic where the person's from. Guess what? A four, if it's a 45-year-old male from America and he stayed at a hostel, perhaps he left a negative review because he didn't expect it to be what it was. So always read where these reviews are coming from and read the reviews, all right? 
Uh, if a place has 100 good reviews, it's probably a good place. Also looking to make sure that the reviews aren't an, a, year la or a year ago or two years ago. So be smart when you're booking. Take all of this in consideration before you book a place. Getting the cheapest place is not always the best uh, idea. And I've seen this with hostels especially. I've met people that are like, yeah, I stayed at, I'm staying at the one for the $4 bed. And I'm like, I'm staying at the one with the $7 bed. And they're like, oh, I wish I would have done that. Uh, because, yeah, it's not really a hostel. It's a family's house. So they obviously didn't do any research. So remember that. Uh, don't just go with the cheapest place. Do some research and figure out the best accommodation. So then you will feel more safe. Um, good judgment when you're getting a taxi. If and when you have to get a taxi, and in some places you do because Uber and Bolt, those are, they're not present. So you have to use a taxi. Be smart. One of the cool, one of the big things to do is when you get into the airport, see if there's a taxi stand inside the airport. Because if there is, that's where you're going to get your taxi 100%. No, no questions asked. So go there and get your taxi. Another thing to do if that's not there, go ask the information desk what the taxi should look like. So sometimes a taxi is white and blue. Sometimes it's yellow and yellow. Um, you know, so if, but sometimes there's taxis that are not real taxis, but they're acting like they are. And the people inside will be able to tell you if, that is a, if that's a realistic ta taxi and what they should say on them or have on them to, uh, to make sure that they're, uh, they're legit. So getting a legit taxi is the biggest thing. Another thing you can always tell if you're getting in a taxi and you don't see a meter up on up where the, like the radio is and see it up there, if you don't see a meter, that's not a real. Ta that's probably not a real taxi, and you should immediately ask them, "Hey, where's your meter at? How do I know what I'm paying?" If he tries to give you an excuse, nope, I'm good. Walk away, get out. Uh, just because it's safe in the airport, they're not going to do anything while you're in the airport. So that's the safest place to get out of the taxi and just find a better one. Um, also, when you're doing the taxis, if when you get to, wait, say you use the taxi and you see the meter, keep your eye on the meter. Because sometimes I've seen personally that the meter just jumps all of a sudden. Ask them why it jumped immediately. Make them explain it to you. Um, if you do and you put up fuss like that, a lot of times they will do it. Uh, they'll, they'll explain it to you or they just won't charge you that much. Because sometimes they will try to take advantage of you. Don't think you're above being taken advantage of because you're not. Anybody and everybody can be taken advantage of, and I've seen it happen with myself plenty of times. Um, next, this is a huge one, especially for female travelers. Watch your drinks. You know, this should go without, without being said. However, it doesn't matter how much you say it. Once you start partying, start getting a couple of drinks in you, you forget I understand that. I understand. However, there are a few things that you could definitely remember. First thing, if someone buys you a drink and you didn't see it come from the bartender, you probably shouldn't take it. Most of the time, drinks, especially when you're staying at a hostel, aren't that expensive because they they take you to places that aren't that expensive for a reason. So, paying your own two or three bucks could be a big uh, could could uh, really be the smart play. So, I understand. Money gets tight, but just be smart, all right? Also, don't be, uh, don't put the bartenders above this as well. I've heard horror stories as well about bartenders doing similar things, and they are friends with the guys that are there that are trying to pick up the girls. So be smart. Watch them make your drinks. It's that easy. Or you drink beers. If you drink bottled beer, uh, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not as likely. Um, these majority of the times, when the roofing and stuff like that happens, it happens in mixed drinks, and you need to be aware. Just know it. Have also a cool another cool thing I've noticed with a lot of solo women traveler. I've noticed they meet with another solo woman, and then they watch each other's back when they're partying. Very smart. Uh, going out in the buddy system is the by far the smartest uh, smartest play. So just keep your eyes out. Remember, watch your stuff. Watch your drinks. Uh, it doesn't. Just because, you know, the bartender's buying you free drinks, does that, that doesn't, don't, be smart, all right? Uh, I've, I've been in, you know, been on all kinds of places, and I've seen and heard stories all the same. So watch your drinks. It's very, very important. Uh, and also, guys could, guys could get reviewed too, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go above that and say that it's only for women. It's for both sexes, so remember that. But, hey, just watch your stuff. I honestly, and then also, 
You know, a, a smart move to do always is drink a, drink a beer, drink a water. Drink a beer, drink a water. That's 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 the way I do it. So, uh, but hey, I'm not the one here. I'm not here to tell you how to party. Uh, just giving you some tips. The next thing, police corruption. This does exist, and I have seen it firsthand. Thailand wasn't. Uh, it was it was an interesting incident that happened. However, be aware, police corruption does still exist in a lot of these countries, and they will aim at tourists because they know if you're going to try to you know pull a uh, pull a pull a fast one and you know, you're going to bribe, they'll, they can get some money out of you because they know you don't want to be arrested. So be aware of this. I always, always be respectful to the police officers that are working in these countries because they're doing their job. Be respectful. Don't be a jerk. And majority of the time, you're, you're good to go. I've also noticed most of the time, cops in these other countries, especially in the tourist years, they work in pairs, at least. They don't work by themselves. So be aware of this. If someone comes up to you and it just seems a little off, you know, ask them if they're a, are you are you an officer? Can you show me your badge? They know what badge is. All right, don't in any culture when you put up your hands like this. Where's your badge? They're gonna know what you're talking about. Uh, but you do it respectfully. Don't be a d. Don't want to cuss. Don't be a jerk. All right, don't be a jerk. Um, so be aware of that. And you know, you can. Ask, there's nothing wrong with you asking, uh, sir or ma'am. Do you have a badge? Uh, can I see your badge? Uh, what did I do wrong? Stuff like that. So be aware of that. There are there are a lot of times there are stuff like that. I have seen things like that. Also, do not try to bribe the cop if they haven't asked you for money. Don't try to just give it to them because that can also put you in jail. That's kind of what happened in Thailand. A, a person I was with kind of went crazy, then brought out a hundred. He's like, I'm getting, I can get away with anything. Well, he went. He did not get away with it. I'll tell you that. So. Uh, be aware of that. Don't try to just bribe cops because you think you can in these other countries because you can't. Um, and then the last area of safety is solo versus group traveling. I am a 100% solo traveler. I love solo traveling. I love meeting new people. It's my way. However, I understand that some, that's not some people's way. All right, and Sometimes they want a group traveling. So what I would say is this... Just take extra precaution if you're solo traveling over group traveling, okay? Um, I'm not saying either way is better. For me, solo traveling is the way, so that's the way I do it. Um, I have met the same amount, probably, of female solo travelers to male solo travelers. In fact, a lot of times I meet more female solo travelers, especially Australians and Germans. They seem to travel solo a lot. And I met more female solo travelers probably than males sometimes in a lot of these countries. A lot of times the males travel in doubles and, um, and triples. So, yeah, j just because your, your gender does not, uh, does not you know, decide if you have to solo travel or group travel. However, make sure you do some research and you understand the cities. If you're a solo traveler, take a little more time researching how to arrive to a place. You know, if you're a group traveler, take a little more time trying to find the discounts on being a group traveler. Another big thing is when you're planning tours, if you're staying at a hostel, try to find someone else that's a solo traveler so that you can get a better deal on the, uh, the trips provided. So there are lots of ways and lots of advantages to solo and lots of ways and lots of advantages to group. So it's, that's up to you, um, but just take the extra precaution depending on which way you're going to be traveling. So that's safety. There's lots to go in safety. The biggest things I, you know, that, that we, I really wanted to cover were be observant, be respectful. Be observant and be respectful. Those are the two biggest things. And number three, be prepared. Yeah, that's actually the biggest one. Be prepared. Do your extra research. Be prepared. And uh, now we're going to get into section six, which should be pretty awesome. So stay tuned for section six.